All right, so at the end of the last video, I showed you the difference between hard edge duotone, where it has this crisp edge between the lights and shadows, and soft edge duotone, which gradates the edge between the lights and the shadows. Right. Now, an easier, an even easier way to play with soft edge duotone is to simply make a copy of your local flat colors. So I'll do that again. And then on that copy, use dodge and burn. This does not work well for hard edge duotone because when you use dodge and burn, it does it in varying amounts. And I'm gonna use it with a soft brush, really large, just like we've learned earlier. Make that pressure sensitive with my tablet. And I can, oh, on the mid-tones. So I'm gonna start with burning and darkening. An exposure of less than 30. Big brush, 0% hardness. So all those things we did in compositing now comes back. And this is on a copy of my flat colors. right? But by dodging and burning, it will only affect where I have color. And again, white isn't a color, so that's why you use something other than solid white. and you dodge and burn. So burning darkens, dodging lightens. Now if you want to darken your brightest shapes, the highlights, you just set it to highlight when you burn, like the wings of the flies, or these highlights in the donut. Makes it look nice and dirty. And when you dodge and brighten, you can set that. Usually I would do it only on the mid-tones, right? And like brighten up the highlights. But you can also do it into the shadows if you want. So to like brighten up this filter, for instance, I might have to switch to dodging the shadows to make more of a difference. Or if I want to get a little subtle color into this lettering, this might be a nice way, the soft edge duotone. Now it's duotone because it's splitting the local color that's there into lights and darks, but it's not changing that color. Right? And that's important. So it's not anything goes with how we color it. It's just soft gradations. So that's soft edge duotone. Now if I kind of add them together, right, like maybe I take that soft edge duotone, my soft edge dodge and burn, and I move it on top of my hard edge duotone, And then I just set my layer style to dissolve so I get that kind of paper dissolved, you know, sandy texture and then take the opacity down. I can get kind of the best of both worlds. So that's what the soft edge is giving me, like that little extra variation. which helps a lot. Same thing with the soft edged I did just by Gaussian blurring out my hard edge. Go to dissolve, push it way down. Yeah, they all kind of work together. Now here's the problem with soft edged. When you do the Gaussian blur, you see all these little specks that go outside of the line? That's because the blur will not stay within the shapes, right? It will extend beyond it. It will soften it. So what you need to do if you Gaussian blur it is then take your lasso, go to your line art, 
or you can go on the outside of your flat local color and you select all that empty space and any undercuts and then you just delete it from the soft edged and then it will get rid of that that kind of blurry outside of the lines mark making but yeah I think that's pretty good so that's probably if I were doing this professionally making like a little sticker design or a little magnet that's probably as much as I would do for the digital coloring so what is the difference between soft edge and hard edge I will show you with the little swatches let me make it a combined layer of everything so let's see layer I've oh, got to select them all layer merge layers all right so now I have a combined layer right this is just to show you Well, digital coloring is about having the lines. <laughs> you want the lines. There's only limited circumstances like this one where you've colored it inside of lines, but then when you erase the lines, you like it more. <laughs> so that's still digital coloring. That's why it's behind a real or implied outline. But most of the time, even if the lines are really thin, they're still there. Or even if they're, they get replaced with a color, they're still there. This is just a style where you get rid of the line entirely, but it's still digital coloring, not digital painting. So if I wanted to change this into soft edged, how can I do that? Right? I would just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur to soften that transition. Right? But at this point, I'm just going to erase all of the swatches and erase them from all these different layers that I've built up of soft edged, of hard edged, of duotone, and of flat color. There we go. I'm trying to find my dissolves. Yep, it's all there. Okay. So, what can I do next? Come to the side. So, the next step is kind of no holds barred coloring. And no holds barred coloring is taking kind of the merged uh, layers all onto one new layer and then adding whatever colors you want into it. So that's duotone hard edge. Let's look at some duotone soft edge. That would look like this. And the next step is what's called full spectrum. And full spectrum takes your local color, like the skin tone, and you add other colors into it, like purple shadows and pinks, greens, reds, whatever colors you want. It becomes more and more painterly. And so we talked about this at the beginning of class. The more you use full spectrum color, like yellows and purples in the skin with pinks, the thinner the line art usually gets. Because you don't want to have heavy line art with full spectrum color or it starts to look like a little too much so sometimes this the full spectrum is really subtle like the oranges and yellows that are in the reds and purples here or the oranges and reds that are in the greens and yellows here and sometimes it's more pronounced 
right? Like the, the red to green shift here. And there's lots of ways you can do it. You know, in color theory with warms and cools has a lot to do with how you might mix the colors into your shadows. But the way I like to do it is pretty straightforward. You take a combined color layer like this, and then you double click to get your layer styles, and then you just play with a gradient overlay. But instead of it being a black white gradient overlay, you choose some pretty strong colors, right? So I can go to normal and change it to noisy and get like a crazy gradient like this, right? This would be for kind of glitch art. I can randomize it until it's something interesting, right? Say OK. I can play with the angle of it. And then I can play with the scale of that. So let's say something like this. And then I'm going to blend those into my colors. Maybe with a different blending mode. Like soft light or hard light. I kind of like that. It's so subtle but it is changing the colors. You can see it in the lettering. You can see the green going to gray, going to blue. And it's doing it in these little striations. This is using kind of computer glitch effects. But let's do it in a different way. I'll duplicate it and do it again. And it, because it's a layer style, it can easily be changed. So instead of using the noise pattern, I can make my own colors. So let's say, you know, bright blue at the top going through, let's say, a really warm yellow in the middle going through kind of a rainbow like a pink and then ending on a green. Why not? And I can kind of move these around. Maybe I switch this one to a darker purple. I switch this one to a brighter green. And now I can play with its effect, right? So. See how that mixes with my colors. Let's try normal mode, right? That's, those are my full spectrum colors and I just mix them in just a little bit. Whether I want it to be more subtle or more extreme. So I like that little purple edge on top of the donut, right? So that's a full spectrum addition. And I can always play with it at a lower opacity. Yeah, that kind of works. What I don't like is how it really takes out the pinks in my shadows. So what I can also do with full spectrum is simply erase with a nice soft brush. and get those shadows back where I want them. That's why we layer it up the way we do. But maybe I don't want to erase it at 100%. Maybe I want to erase it with a soft edge brush. At like 60%. That's why I want these shadows to be stronger. And all I'm erasing is the full spectrum effect. When I was erasing with the full circle, what I want to be erasing with 
is a pressure-sensitive 